Hello, this is Neil from MyPaintGirls.com and I'm going to be showing you how to do speed paintings in real time here. I'm going to work at, you know, somewhere close to the size I would actually be working at. I'm going to go with something strange, so I'm just going to go with a square canvas here. So notice how it's at 300 dpi. I'm going to start with the background here. Just going to use a um, standard texture brush comes with Photoshop. I'm going to start with this kind of bluish color. Work big first and work zoomed out all the way. You want to be able to see the whole entire picture. Don't zoom in yet. Uh, you don't want to zoom in until after you're finished with the speed painting. And then after the speed painting is finished, then you can start uh, zooming in. Just, you know, a little color variation there. That pink is kind of interesting. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the overall, like, um, you know, like thick shape. So this here, that, that's going to be light. This will be dark in the foreground. That gives me my overall shape, and that's kind of cool. I can run with that. It's going to be something like trees and kind of fantasy-like. Um, might even want more light back there. And... Um, and I'm thinking of my color scheme too. I'm going to be doing a mixture of uh, like warms and cools. Mostly cool, as you can see here. The blues and uh, greens are also cool colors. The trees are going to be kind of bluish green. Um, I add a little bit of purple there and then a little more blue. And something like that. I need some more just like standard green in there I think. And notice when you use this brush like that you can get some quick color variation there really really looks nice. I need a little bit more blue in the background. And something like that. And I'm going to reduce my size of my brush a little bit once I got the overall shape of everything. And I'm going to start bringing this, trying to shape up what I want. I know I want this to be one tree here, and then I kind of want, um, usually don't paint with black, but if you just start with black and then pick up the color again to where it's not totally black, then that's fine. You usually don't want like pure black in your painting though. And I kind of bring that around. All right, so that's going to be the darkest part of the whole painting is way up here. And this is going to kind of come up and these are going to kind of come together like this, like this trees are kind of overlapping like that and then back there is like part of another tree or something maybe. That kind of comes up and you just kind of see part of it and then I'm going to kind of, um, no nope, wrong color, kind of bring the mist coming up like that or something so you can't see that as much. Now what I'm going to do is bring in another painting. It's not mine. Just copy and paste it in here. And what this is going to do is help me get some... Notice it has a similar shape to mine, which is why I want to use it. And this will add texture and color variation when I just set it to overlay. So immediately I get this kind of stuff happening and some texture and it's really cool. So it's a quick way you can either use you know your own paintings or other people's painting it doesn't really matter because what's going to be left is nothing of their painting it's just to give you a quick kind of i i don't know it's hard to it, it like triggers ideas and all kinds of cool stuff so it's it's a good trick to do like I said, it gives you a bunch of color variation and everything right so now I have the main color scheme this kind of blue a lot of cool colors and I want to offset those cool colors with like warm and this is like basic color theory is uh, if you have a bunch of cool colors then you can offset it with like a couple warm colors in this case this is a warm color you know like um, purples anything like that this starts getting more sorts of cool but these are all warm uh, pinks orange reds you know that's where you start getting to your warm colors and just kind of maybe a little bit I think what makes really nice colors together is yellow and this pink color together. Maybe just a little bit of where it's, but mostly it's going to be coming in here and kind of reflecting off. 
then I'm going to take the yellow here and really kind of, this is going to be the warmest part right there. And that's going to be kind of bleeding out into this color. See how those two, I think those two colors look really nice together. And uh, that's all like, you know, little details I can go in and, you know, fix it all up and make it more detailed where you can really see how it's kind of glistening off of the trunk there. And you're going to need this more of this kind of green color over here to add some texture and like let's say there's going to be another little hole here to really kind of start with the pink first rather. And then I'll go with the yellow and kind of just blend out into it. And I want to add a couple little marks with the pink first and then with the yellow. If you don't know how to do that I'm just holding alt to pick up colors. This is not like a basic tutorial, so I'm not going to go into all those little minor details that, you know, the little things I'm doing. But that's stuff you should know how to do. And if, and if you need the basics of Photoshop and, and how to understand it, I have a um, nine hour digital download on my website, ipaintgirls.com, and you can download that for only 10 bucks. And it goes through the entire Photoshop CS5. If you don't have CS5, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's um, it, it, it can be used for older ones too. I mean, there's some things you won't be able to do with it, but that's fine. It'll it'll get get. It's a more general like where it's just like how to use Photoshop in a more general sense. So you don't have to worry about it not applying to you. It'll definitely apply to you. So I'm trying to keep some of that texture from the underpainting in there a little bit. Just kind of use it to my advantage. And I'm trying to you know, add a bunch of kind of tree, you know, shapes here where it comes out. And you can just keep getting smaller and smaller with your brush, adding little details here and there. And then you can like kind of break this up a little bit to make it look like you yeah, you have more, there's some more texture in there as well. And then you can kind of paint with this color here the actual trunk shape here and then kind of shape it with these colors because this is all being blended with this color. So what happens here is that um, you're kind of paint the same way I painted here except I'm doing it with pink and orange instead of the light green and kind of darker green. Right, and then another thing I can do too, just to add some color variation, is I can make a copy of this and go to like, let's say overlay. That's too dark and doesn't really add much color variation. And so I can go to image adjustments and color balance and just find, you know, I want, I want more of this kind of blue to be, I don't want too much blue, but more blue. That's kind of destroying the other colors I had in there. Let's see here. Um, I'll go to curves. Sometimes you have to mess around with a few stuff until you get something that you think works. That's starting to look cool. I'm going to push pause and grab a texture. All right, so this is a texture I use all the time in my comic and paintings and stuff. Just, I don't know, you find a texture you, you really like and, and it works and so you just keep using it. I set it to overlay, see what kind of color variations and, and texture I can get out of it. So that'll work. And then I'm going to take my soft brush here and just kind of put some of this. And I might want to keep... Oops. I meant to... Uh, merge down. I want to just bring a little bit of that and then down here I want to add a little bit of this mist as if, as if it's coming up in here. Another way to add mist too is like use a cloud brush and um, once you have it there then you can grab these colors with the alt key and you know start 
coloring back in. I'm using the wrong brush there. I was using a cloud brush. Actually, I could use my cloud brush for it's a one. It's a homemade one I made that just uh, kind of is cool and adds this little bit of texture variation to the back here. And I'm not really sure what it's going to be yet, whether it's going to be trees or maybe like a part of a city or something. There's so many ways I can go with that. I'm not really sure what to do. And um, I'm going to kind of pick one of these uh, kind of turquoise green colors and kind of add some of that in there. Don't be afraid just to like drop colors right over your other your other colors. Even something crazy like you can like try just to add a little color variation, you know, draw drop something crazy like a little bit of pink or something in there and just mess with it. I kind of want to add a bunch of texture here to this tree. So notice to um to really save time what you do a lot of is uh, you use your brushes really big and you want to do that first and then just to kind of get the, the basic shapes and everything down and then you can start coming in with smaller brushes and just adding a little detail and it's important that you stay zoomed out. Notice if I go to actual pixels this is way not done. I mean look at all that. That's ugly, right? So from far away it looked kind of cool but look at all this. I have to go in and really you know define all that and that's just going to take a lot of, you know, work. So, and that's you know, that's when you decide if you like the overall composition and how everything's looking. Then you can go in with those kind of details and um, fix it up and make it look all awesome and detailed and add textures and a lot of work. That's why paintings take so long. But coming up with an idea, the speed painting part. Well, that that doesn't take too long, it's not too hard, it's not too time consuming. I think I want more. Like it's I'm trying to think how where would the light be coming from if it was if it's going deep inside the light would be coming from here. Because it's going deep inside up in the trunk or something. Add just a little bit of reflections off that over there and you can like go and fix that up and you know all that would be like a little tree tree trunk part. You can see less and less of the light as it comes out there. Add some you know details to the outside of the tree there. Shaping it up because it you're gonna have like some shapes to the tree. And notice I wanted some sharpness in there even though it's like kind of being blocked a little bit by by mist and fog. I, I had to grab this color. I just want to break it up, but I want a little bit of the sharpness to come through as well. It, it, it sells it better that way if you do it that way. And then maybe add just uh, a really big brush a little bit more. I'm running out of time. I just basically I just wanted to you know talk about speed painting in general and just give you some tips how to get going and then maybe you know once you have all this done you know I want to add a little bit of um, like that this is just like little reflecting reflecting in it and then I can go in back with this and, and break it up and um, you know make it whatever texture this is you know this is gonna be like a tree texture so and I can also go in here and add a little bit of that texture and I can go back in with that pink color you know to really kinda come in here and add some of that tree texture to kinda show like that and kinda and then break that up with dark color and so like that and maybe add a little just a couple outside here even though this right here would be mostly it might have just a little bit 
highlights from reflecting off of some other branch like there's another branch out here that we can't see off camera and this light is bouncing off that and back onto here like it's reflective bounce light so you want to keep that in mind you usually always have a little bit of reflected bounce light and stuff and then um, from here we can do all kinds of cool stuff like for example I can do new layer because I don't know how experimental this will be at this point I can take a darker kind of bluish color here and I can add you know some kind of no, I can add like big structures back here like it's going to be some type of castle or something and so that's going to be more in the foreground then you, you just add a little bit of details to it and then I would grab this here oh man I'm out of time I think I, I think it's still you have to keep it under 16 minutes I think and then yeah, I can add start details maybe add some statues back there in the foreground here I can like add some um, you know wires and stuff that are coming together and um, you know oh, I'm done sorry gotta close it